All right, see what we get. Hey guys, and how's it going? Hey, I'm gonna continue the video on this, I think it's a 1937 Water Witch outboard that I grabbed at a yard sale uh, about a month ago for 40 bucks. It's cool, it's got a really cool looking gas tank on it. It's getting cleaned at the moment, but I'll show you that in a second. Anyway, on the first video, we were able to go through it, took it all apart, found out what made it tick, got spark, and uh, took the bottom drive apart, and it's kind of a mess. We'll have to clean that up. There's a water pump here, and then the drive down below, both of those needing some love. Found a crack in the exhaust going around, and tried getting it running, kept putting fuel in where the plug hole is, spin it with a drill, and it would pop and part and cough, but not light off. Finally, I put the carburetor back on it, and when I did that, there's a check valve in the bottom of this, and it's kind of the one way door. When the piston's going up and down and on a two-stroke, it takes the air fuel charge from the crank part of it and moves it around to the combustion side of it and then lights in and keeps repeating that process. Well, anyway, if there's nothing on the other end of the engine, it just blows back out this direction instead of, you know, tr making it travel to the front. So as soon as I put the carburetor on, no fuel or nothing in it, but, you know, squirted some in the crank, then it lit off and fired and it actually sounded pretty good. So we are uh, going to try to keep going on this and uh, get complete. Uh, to the point where it can push water. Hopefully that's the goal that we're gonna go for. And I think the next thing we should do is get this carburetor off of here, take that apart, see what issues that needs to get cleaned. It has no float ball on it, so it's gonna be a little different. I've never uh, kind of worked on something like that before. So let's go have some fun and tear that apart. I was gonna unbolt the car, but I decided to, let's see if we can get these fuel lines to break loose instead of us trying to wrestle with the carburetor not mounted to something. We could break it off instead. <laughs> let, me, let me get that one to crack. Because there's uh, lines, screws rather, underneath that need to uh, come out. I just want to crack them loose. That's good. I've got that one. This one. She's going. Not much room to work. But I've seen worse. Alright, they're loose. When you go to the doctor's office, you sit down and you're waiting and there's those charts, those charts on the walls. That reminds you of anything? <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> you seem to remember on the, the woman's chart or something that looks like that. Alright, we need to get rid of these.
Ooh. That's corroded. I'd say we go take its parts and soak them in the parts washer, the ultrasonic cleaner rather. They look like arteries of a 70 year old. You know, we'll get them rinsed out too. And we'll go eat the gas tank. So the tank's been sitting about 24 hours now and I left it filled to the top and filled to the top. It doesn't look like it's leaking anywhere, so that's good. I'm gonna go dump that back in there, and we can take our carb parts and let them do their thing. We'll let that heat up. Let's see how this works out for us. You could still see there's a lot of sludge. I don't know if that scrapes off. Uh, I would have thought that would have gotten it. It works excellent on carburetors. And again, it didn't have any heat introduced to it. I don't know. I might try like acetone maybe. I kind of want to rinse it with water first, but the whatever you get into this tank is not going to come out of it. So if I put something in it that's going to cause issues for us to run, like, you know, if you acetone, if there's remnants of acetone left and I mix it with gas, it's not going to explode or will it <laughs> anyway uh yeah i'm gonna go find some other kind of chemical on that squish around in there a little bit and see if it'll break that that varnish that's in the bottom all right take your pick that's <laughs> what i got uh, i think i'm gonna go try it just a little bit in this one tank like you know half inch on the bottom we'll let it just kind of sit in there see if it starts to break it up before i commit to anything and we'll just do one at a time which one are you going for i'm going for lack of thinner Try that one first, see how it does. And if there's no more clips after this, you know it went terribly wrong. And muscle while that stuff's soaking. We'll look at the stuff that's on the bottom in it. So this is the water pump. I think it was like that. That's how it was mounted. And it has a little brass plunger with a spring. And there's a cam. It's a cam down inside there that pushes on it because it runs all the time it spins all the time whenever the motors run on the uh, the prop is turning so it's got a little piston and it looks like it just does that and it has to have a couple of check valves possibly that is one right there and then there's the, the pipe that goes up to it we had to remove a copper fitting whoa you go on. We removed a copper fitting that was, I think it was like that, threaded down in it. Nope, like that. And that has a hole in it right there, and I can't, I can't see through it. There's something there. So that may have a valve inside there too that is part of it. But let's go get those cleaned up and see if, I don't know if we could probably maybe stick it in a bucket of water and kind of give it a bunch of pulses and make sure it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. Think? All right. So it looks like it's got a port right down here. And it looks like water comes in through here, through the piston, and then up through the top. I still don't know what the check valve part is, but let's just make sure air can blow through them. That almost feels like there's some kind of something flapping in there. On that section uh, we got this one that was just my air gun <laughs> all right 
Let's get. Let's go. If those are just clear passages, I don't want to screw with them too much. Let's go see. I'm going to blow into one side of this. There it is right there. Yeah, the valve's inside here. Good. I'm going to go clean this one up and just wash this stuff. And I guess we got to get it so that that thing kind of moves. This be able, needs to be able to move up and down without binding. It looks like someone made or beat on it or ground the end off or made it maybe longer. I don't know. But it doesn't exactly feel fluid inside there. So we may have to do some doctoring. I don't know how close that, that cam is, you know. If it's out here, that's not going to help us at all. Let's go put this thing in water. I think that just has, well, actually, the whole thing's gonna be submerged. Let's go see if that'll pump out the top if I. It does. Why does it seem like more is coming out of there? Is that blocked? I think that has a screw in it, so that'll be blocked. Yeah, there you go. And make your own jokes. Feel free to make your own jokes. All right, so that part will function as it should. Let's go look at the little gearbox on it. Actually, we want to measure that cam, right? We want to see how far down. Okay, I'm hitting the cam right there. So that's going to make it right there so that goes all the way into there and that last little bit's the stroke i'm just going to confirm that that little bit right there still makes it pump water well i guess we should make sure air blows through and comes out the other end with the water system let's go see if we can get in the sneak way in there Good, that feels like it's clear. So the next thing, and they kind of get bolted on together, is that set of gears. And it's got a drain plug right here, and that's actually a fill plug. And then there's another plug right there. So the idea is you take a, a bottle of gear lube and you put the bottle against here and you fill this whole cavity up till it starts to run out of there. That makes it so air pockets don't get built behind something if you dumped it in the top there's a chance that you would get an air pocket and think it's full and it's not so that's how they do outboards i'm gonna i shot some like oil of some sort down in there earlier i'm gonna go rinse that out too probably in the parts washer get whatever kind of crusty rust is uh rinsed out of there because if you mix it with oil it's just gonna keep grinding itself around we'll just clean that the best we can this is the support bushing for it. And it's got a bunch of crap up inside there. It needs to get cleaned out too. So I'll clean all that. And hopefully it'll hold gear oil. And that bolts like that. And then the water pump with that off of there sits up inside and they use that same screw. Like I said, normally you pull the plugs and you fill it, but I have it apart and I am literally going to... I don't know what this calls for, but it's getting lower unit gear lube. It might have been more of a grease or something, but judging by those fill plugs, 
we're on the right track. I think it's gonna ooze out. I think I got room in here yet too. So we can go flush, we'll go right to the top. You know, leave a little bit of a an air spout. Airspace. Okay, so that one. Nothing else goes in there, right? right? No thrush washer or anything that I'm missing. I'm questioning myself. So the prop will uh, prop will always be turning this way pushing the shaft that way, so I don't think it would have one. If I do, I'll take it back apart. Get it in the hole. That's that one. This one, we gotta get that out of it. And that's gotta drop down. I almost wanna put a little bit of lube on that can, but it's just gonna wash it. Eh. Don't know. I don't have an answer. I'm gonna leave her going in dry. And this tube goes in the tube goes in the side. I gotta tighten that up. I'm gonna get all the hardware, screw that together. Let's see what our lacquer thinner is doing. Actually that looks pretty good. It's like melting it. Yeah, that's rinsing it away pretty good. I'm gonna put some more in there so it kind of flows over the other side. I have half a mind to tie it to the wheel in the car outside and let her spin around, but we're going to let that soak out, see if we can get rid of that sludge while we're doing other stuff. And all I got to do is every once in a while come by and do that. Even cleans the outside. And hopefully that will get rid of all the goo. Clean the prop up. It's got some decent corrosion on it but for 83 years old it's allowed that just gets essentially hand tight was that, that, that pin that was in there is a shear pin and the idea is you hit something in the water it breaks it doesn't break the outboard and you you're supposed to carry one with you. A lot of modern ones have like a little parking spot for them. Where's the crack? Can't find the crack. <laughs> that it? It's telling me no. I thought it was directly like that. Eh? Close. A new key probably wouldn't hurt. But then it wouldn't be all original, it would it? It has to have a little bit of play to be able to shear, you know? You don't want to run the bolt right in. Yeah, we're good. That should really turn. spark plug out of it. Let's just go spin it with a drill and see if she uses any oil. That's just to play on the pin. I'm not worried about that. I'm just trying to feel on the bushings how much there is if it's kind of rocking it all feels pretty good it's a lot of dirt coming out of that one let's go rinse them off and bring them back over all those carb pieces cleaned out and blown out but the idle mixture jet 
It definitely has some scaliness. I'm going to do my best to go over the wire wheel and just gingerly try to knock off the crap that's on there. Let's put this thing back together. So for that air fuel mix, which is the only adjustment really I think we have on this whole thing, I'm going to grab a new O-ring. And that black material right there almost looks like a Bakelite. It, it goes down to about right here and then threads and metal start. So I am not going to remove that stuff. Because I don't think I have anything. We got packing on the end of it, you know, so it has a seal. Not sure how far down that goes. It feels like it's hitting right there. We'll back that up about a foot and a half. Plus, it kind of puts drag on the screw. I found that on one of the other old outboards. You could adjust the packing on them. And as it was riding around, the, it kept changing the mix. <laughs> they weren't tightened enough. That was on the, the Chris Craft Barracuda. That's an old one. It feels decent. Could always pack two in there if we have to, right? All right, we got that funky bowl set up. So we got, what, a spring? How's this go? That. The spring was on the upper side, correct? And where did that go? See, that went there. Is there a th thrust surface there? That wouldn't even... I don't even think that'll fit up there. I can leave it there. The gasket still looks good. You see, I took great pleasure in cleaning the top of that, didn't I? Recommend. We'll pretend that we left the part alone so that it shows the originality of it. <laughs> and other than the other than the manifold, what a simple system. So how does it not feed too much gas like it has no float ball this is the intake so when the piston goes up and it's sucking an air charge into the bottom of the crankcase that lifts up allows some air to go through mix with gas going to the bottom end when the piston goes back down the other way that shuts and blocks the door all right so every time the piston goes up and down it draws a pulse but this would be in the down position. So when that is in the down position, is that plugging that jet? I know, we're just blowing it, right? I got to run into for spec that out. So if I push up on it, It's exactly that's exactly what it does so i don't think that's a a, a great non-leaking surface because that means that whole thing is like a needle and seat still just a guess on my part i can see you running this in when you're not using it does the knob say anything So is this, this is the timing one, and this, I think it's going to be that, let's go a little tickler, prepare for priming fuel. So to turn it, yeah, so when you're done, you got to shut the fuel off, you run it in. 
and you crank it this way to open it up to let gas go in. And you, you tweak it as you go, I guess. Right? You agree? <laughs> if not, we're going to find out. That's what I'm going with. Yeah, I couldn't see them kind of relying on that whole surface. Alright, I'm gabbing. Put her together. Well, ain't that just sexy. The thing's just sitting on there. Uh, it When I took the cleaner out of it, what did I use? I forget what I already used. Lack of thinner. Out of it. Uh, it still has got some staining and crap inside it. So I actually put the gas that's going to be running in it. It's a uh, Cam 2 racing fuel and then I'll, I'll add oil to it. And I just got that sitting in there. And I let it sit overnight because I'm going home to go eat anyway. And we'll detect, sit on that, see if that disturbs it. If it melts it, fine, it comes off. If it does nothing, just leaves it well enough alone, then the tank is clean enough to operate because it doesn't, the gas isn't affecting it. <laughs> That's my plan anyway, till whenever. All right, it's been sitting again. Let's see what kind of burbles we get out of it. What do you think, water or tea? Had a little bit of a little bit of chunks coming out of it. To let all the fuel run down to that side. Hear it? <laughs> I think we're just gonna go for it. It's a slight possibility that we're gonna get clogged, but at this point, I want to move forward. <laughs> Get rid of these the pliers. Mix this up. It's like thirty to one, but using modern premix oil instead of just using like thirty weight motor oil, which is what this calls for. Right. Let's not commit too much. As long as it's enough to go down the gas line. I say we put a little primer down in the plug hole. Maybe you just want to try spinning it and see what it does. Let's go spin it with the drill and see what happens without putting any fuel in it. So essentially we've got two adjustments. So this one's run all the way in. Now I'm going to go, I don't know what you think about that much. I went to the point where it dripped gas out. And this, I think this way is stop. So slow, maybe start right there. Shall we give her? I think we're ready to roll. Open. Anything else? Nothing's gonna, the prop's not gonna catch on to something. <laughs> I know we kick it all like that. I still have to be able to reach the knobs and let's tighten the vise up too. dial right in. That was uh, much easier than I expected. <laughs> I think we should do next. Give it a bath. Yeah, that might take a minute. Huh? Not bad for whipping something up. See how it does for us. We got water now. I'm gonna go with one turn out. Sounds good. Too much. Let's give 
a little bit more throttle. Water, that's a good sign. <laughs> Prop dip in case. How slow I can get it to go. Not bad, not bad. Even the water's not all that gooey or nothing. I'm not putting a, a cloud of oil on it. Nice, runs pretty good. Not sure how good it's gonna start with a rope. All right, so we got I, almost one. I call that one turn. That should stop from dripping anymore. And that throttle's slow and that's fast, so I have it backwards, whatever I was thinking. All right, I'm gonna go take it and just pop the mag back off, get all the bolts on the tank, everything kind of bolted up nice and solid so that it doesn't want to flop around on us. And we'll have a completed unit. I'll put back together. <laughs> I'm going for it. How many times do you think? I may need a bigger rope. All right. You gotta tickle it. Let me get a little bit of fuel coming out. Hopefully. Actually. Yeah, let me uh, open the main jet open a little bit more. Think so? Maybe a better way to hold it. <laughs> I'm gonna say three times. <laughs> it's easy to say after I already take one, right? <laughs> I'm a loser. I'm gonna get the drill in a second. We'll dial it in first and <laughs> watch that spark or something. So try to see how slow I can get it to go. Let's give it some more gas.
Sure, peel off. Seems like it's doing fine. You have to, between high rev and low rev, uh, or idle higher RPM, you do have to make adjustments to the air fuel mix. You only have one to go with. And it uh, seems like you gotta kind of fudge it um, for one to the other as you go in there. Other than that, it seems like it's fine. It doesn't even, like I said, nasty up the water too much. The blue crap floating around is just parts of the, the barrel when I cut it. Nice. No water pissing out of where it shouldn't. <laughs> Well, all right. You know what's next? Looks like it'll fit pretty good. Nice. So the first question is, that boat has never been in the water by me. We don't know what it's got for holes. <laughs> I have a feeling we're about to find out right now. goes right under. <laughs> it should be tied to the trailer and not float away. Maybe we'll just let that do its thing for a few minutes while I get the motor. We can pop it back on there. Hopefully I have enough room to back up and the trailer's not in the way. Almost like I planned it. Except for that hit it's going to do right now. <laughs> there goes the paint. I don't see anything yet. It's a good sign. Well, I tell you that boat is made for like a 25 horsepower, not a 2.5 horsepower. So I don't exactly expect it to uh, get up on plane, but it would be a good test for it. We can a good test platform to go put it around and see what it can actually do. Without further ado, let's go roar ourselves out a little bit. See if she'll fire up. And not quite sure how vibrating it's going to be for you guys. I have a feeling it's going to be quite a bit. So we're going to want actually straight up and down. We're going to go for a run and about a turnout. Give her a little tickle. Actually, we've got a crack open that's already open. See if we get some gas coming out of her. I brought more gas with me. I don't know how much is in these tanks. Let's see what we get. Did you know they have the uh, 83 year old outboards have electric start? <laughs> Uh -oh, wrong way. <laughs> yeah, she's gonna be a shaky one. We gotta be able to dial her in. So what was that? I think we have to go a little bit more richer. I'm gonna set you back up and uh, we'll try it again. I am afraid of losing the socket overboard. From too rich or too lean. Uh oh. The whole fly will just lift it up. <laughs> I'm gonna bring you back when it's running. <laughs> I need two hands.
pretty good. like that. Making some heat now. Yes. Yeah, we're running out of gas. We have some more in the tank. So I should not lose, not lose that. Yeah, there's not much in there. I think it picks it up from the middle of the tank.
<laughs> and we made it back without rowing. Well guys, that was fun. That worked out really good. Have to uh, definitely tweak the air fuel mix as you're playing with the RPMs of the engine slash motor. But it works out fine. Probably a little easier for me having an electric start compared to the gentleman who bought it 83 years ago. He's probably enjoy rope starting it. But then again, it's probably better dialed in than it is now. Boat worked out fine too. No issues with that. I think it would work for a good test bed. That's staying here for future outboards that we work on. We have something to go and run it. But yeah, that one worked out just fine. Uh, again, a little finicky trying to dial it in, but uh, that's, <laughs> it's 83 years old. Not bad for what was going on. You want to think of 1937, what people were driving around in 1937, what they had to go tweak and tune and play with to go for a ride. You know, it wasn't exactly a maintenance-free item back then. So, some guys, uh, Looking from up above, looking down, seeing his old outboard that he bought and cherished. That was probably his baby. Every Sunday he probably went out fishing at 5 o'clock in the morning. And this is what got him out there. And it lives again. So with that, guys, I want to thank you all for hanging out with me. A little bit of wrenching, bringing some elderly motors back to life. And just having some fun. So, till the next one, I'll see you later. Take care.